Hi guys, welcome to my channel Creatively Expressive. My name is Amy and today I'm sharing an idea on how to repurpose an old lampshade. So when I first had the idea for this, I started searching online to see if anyone else had done the same thing and I wasn't able to find anything. So as far as I know, I'm the first person to come up with this idea and I'm super excited to share it with you guys. So if you wanna see what I did with an old lampshade, then please stick around. There was a lot of trial and error involved in this project, but I think the end result was well worth it. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. I got this lampshade from Goodwill for $3.49 and the first thing I do is have my husband cut off those top metal pieces for me. Then I'm going to cut off and remove the fabric covering. So as I said in the intro, this project involves some trial and error. So my first plan was to use one of these wood rounds from the Dollar Tree for the bottom. I am sectioning off the wood round into eight sections, and then I am drilling six more holes into it in addition to the two holes that were already in it. Then I will be using this 3 8 inch thick sizal rope that I got from Amazon for this project, and I used about five rolls total. I am going to put some hot glue in the center of the wood round, and I stick down the end of the rope in the center of the wood round, and then I am going to wind the rope around the center, gluing it down as I go. And I stop gluing when the rope meets those drilled holes, and I take the wood round over to the lampshade frame. I'm going to place that wood round in the center of the lampshade, and then I'm threading jute twine through the holes in the wood round so that I can tie the wood round to the lampshade frame. I tie on holes on two opposite sides first so that I can make sure that the round stays centered, and then I attach the rest of the holes to the frame. And I'm going to use masking tape on the end of the jute twine to make it easier to thread it through the holes. Now that I have it attached, I'm going to finish gluing the rope down to the wood round. Then my idea was to weave the rest of the rope in and out of the jute twine until it meets up with the edge of the frame. But then I realized this wasn't going to work. The rope wasn't staying where I needed it to, and it was wanting to go underneath that wood round. So at this point, I decided to start over. So my next idea was to use a large piece of cardboard for the bottom. I placed the frame on top of the cardboard and I traced it onto the cardboard. Then I use an X-Acto knife to cut out the circle. Now I'm trying to find the center of the circle so I can glue my rope on. And then I will repeat the same steps that I did with the wood round. And also I'm using work gloves with this project because the rope is pretty rough and it was scratching up my hands. Just a little FYI. Now I cut off the rope before I get to the edge of the circle because I want to be able to poke holes around the edge of that circle. To poke the holes, I am using a small screwdriver first to make a small hole, and then I am poking in the same hole again with a larger screwdriver to make that hole bigger.
Then I'm just cutting away a little bit of that extra cardboard where I have more of a gap between the holes and the edge of the circle. Now I'm going to crochet with some jute twine around the edge of my circle. If you have never crocheted, don't worry, it's not that complicated. First you want to start by making a loop with your fingers. You're going to wrap the twine around two fingers, holding the end with your other two fingers and thumb. When the twine gets to the back of your fingers, you're going to push it through the center of the circle you made around your fingers. Then you pull on the part that you pushed through the center until a knot forms below your loop. And you can make the loop smaller by pulling on the longer end of your jute twine. Now I'm going to be using a three millimeter crochet hook. I'm using the smallest crochet hook that I have so it will fit through the holes that I made on my cardboard. I am going to start by putting my hook through the twine loop and then through one of the holes in my cardboard round. Then I take the longer end of my twine and wrap it over to the back side of the cardboard and then use my crochet hook to pull that long end through the hole. Now I will have two loops on my crochet hook. Then I will take that long end of twine again and pull it through the two loops on my hook. Now I will only have one loop again on my hook. Then I will put my hook through the next hole on my cardboard and pull that long end of twine through the next hole. Then I will have two loops on my hook again and then I will be grabbing that long end of twine from the back side of the cardboard and pulling it through those two loops on my hook. I am going to repeat this process around the entire cardboard round and when I get back to the beginning I will show you what the next step is. Now that I am back at the beginning again, I am going to put my hook through the first hole again and pull a loop through the hole and then pull the long end of the twine through the two loops on my hook. Then I am going to pull the long end of the twine through the single loop on my hook, making another single loop. Now for the second row, instead of putting my hook through the cardboard holes, I will be putting my hook through each of the chains I made on the first row. Each part of the chain looks like a little V and you want to put your hook under each of the V's. So you put your hook under the V and grab the long end of your twine and pull it under the V to the front of your chain. Then you should have two loops on your hook. Then just like on the previous row, you're going to grab the long end of the twine from the back and pull it through the two loops on your hook. Then you will put the hook under the next V and grab the twine again, making two loops on your hook. Then you will grab the long end of the twine again and pull it through the two loops on your hook. And you will just repeat this process until you get back to the beginning of the new row. And if there are any crocheters watching this, I know I'm not using the correct terminology to explain this, but I am better at crocheting than I am at explaining how to crochet. My grandma taught me how to crochet and I learned how to actually do it way before I learned all the technical terms for it. And if you're new to crocheting, I hope what I'm saying is making some kind of sense to you. A lot of times I'm a lot better at doing than I am at explaining things. At this point in my process, I decided to switch to a bigger hook since I was finished with the row going through the cardboard holes. This made crocheting with the twine a little quicker and easier for me.
Now I'm back to the beginning of the second row and I'm going to put my hook through the first stitch or V that I made on the second row. I'm going to pull the piece of long twine through it making two loops on my hook and now instead of pulling a piece of that long end of the twine through the two loops, I'm going to pull the first loop through the second loop. Then I'm going to cut my twine, leaving a tail, and then pull on the loop, pulling the tail through. Now I'm going to go over to my lampshade frame and add extra columns to it. So I'm taking jute twine and double wrapping it around the top and the bottom of the frame and then tying the ends into knots. I'm going to add two extra columns in between each of the metal bars. I'm using the thin jute twine from the Dollar Tree, but you might want to use something thicker and you'll see why in a bit. Now I'm using this tan and white jute from the Dollar Tree and a yarn needle to attach my cardboard to the lampshade frame. First I am going to thread my needle with the twine. Then I will thread the needle and twine through one of the stitches or V's on my cardboard round. Then I am going to wrap the twine around the base of my frame and then thread the needle and twine through the next V stitch on my round. And I will just continue to do this around the whole frame and round. I have loose ends left over from tying off my columns and I am just making sure to wrap those in when sewing around the base of the frame. I am also going around the whole thing twice to make sure that the round is attached to the base really well. And when I get to the end of the twine I am just weaving through the rest of my twine and tying it off the way you would when you are hand sewing anything. Then I will weave some of that tail through the twine that is wrapped around the frame and then cut off the excess.
Have you guessed what we're making yet? If you guessed a basket, you're right. Now I want to fill in the rest of the area in between that rope base and the frame of my basket. So I'm just going to hot glue some more rope around the base until it meets up with the frame. Now we can start on the sides of the basket. So I am just going to take that sizal rope and weave it in and out of the columns on the frame. I'm going to take the end of the rope and fold it over one of the metal bars and hot glue the end to the rest of the rope. It wasn't sticking very well for me, so then I decided to take a piece of that tan and white jute twine and hot glue it to the sizal rope, and then wrap it around the area where I glued the sizal rope to itself several times to hold it together. Then when I feel like I have wrapped it enough times, I will cut the jute and then hot glue the end of the jute twine down. Now this next part is kind of a pain in the butt, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but what I'm doing is taking the opposite end of the rope from the end I just attached to the frame and I am weaving the rope through the columns. I go over one column and under the next column so it's an over under over under pattern. And I'm going to weave the rope through about five or six columns and then pull all that rope through before weaving through another set of columns, if that makes sense. And I am working with 100 feet of rope, so this is kind of a pain in the butt, like I said before. Also, I want my rows to alternate where the rope is. So if it's on the outside of the column on one row, then on the next row right above it, I want it to be on the inside and vice versa. But what I discovered when I got to my second row is that it wasn't automatically doing that for me. The reason I think it wasn't working for me is that I had an even number of columns and I think for it to work right, you need an odd number of columns. So the way that I solved this is that I just put the rope on the outside of two columns in a row in one spot. And then when I got to the next row in that same spot, I put the rope on the inside of two columns in a row. And when my basket was all finished, I don't think it was really noticeable that I did that in the one spot. But if I were to do this again, I would try making an odd number of columns. Also, once I did a few rows of the rope, I got into a rhythm. I realized it made things easier if I put all my rope on the right side of me and then pulled it through my columns until it was all on the left side. Then I would pick up all of the rope, keeping track of the end, and put it all back on the right side and pull it through my columns again. Then when I get to the end of my rope, I will glue the end around that metal bar like I did when I started with the other end of the rope. 
My lampshade measures 20 inches tall and about 18 inches wide, and it ended up using close to five rolls of rope total for this basket. Now for this next little bit of video, I'm going to turn the sound on so you can hear a bit of the struggle I was having. Also, quick note, I'm wearing a mask and safety glasses because when I was pulling the rope through the columns, rope fibers were flying everywhere and getting in my eyes and mouth. So be sure to wear safety gear when doing this project. This is confusing, guys. It's very confusing. I have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I have nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. You think if you had twenty five instead of twenty four like I have, you wouldn't have to skip two in one spot like I like I had to do. See right here, I had to skip two in one spot. I think if you had one, like an uneven number, an odd number, then you wouldn't have to do this, I think. But I'm not sure because they have an even number. But that's what I'm guessing. I'm guessing that if you had an odd number, that you wouldn't have to skip two at one spot, like I'm doing. I don't know. Something to try if you actually decide to try this. Okay. I think I'm going to try to go this way. Let's see how this works. Cross your fingers. Over. Under. Over. Under. Over. Under. I have to double it. Hopefully, I don't have to double it again because I'm always just have to double it once. So, the way this works, Jeez, for some reason that was not working. I'm gonna do this more. Over, under, over, under, over, under. Here, right? And let's see. Moment of truth here. Let's see if this works. Okay, so under is right. And if I go over here, yep, sweet. Okay. I'm going to pull this out because this is too much work for me to have to pull through. But I know it's going to work. So and now it's all on my left side. And throw it back over to the right. Oh, uh -oh where's my end? Where'd my end go? Ah! Shoot. 
There it is. Okay. Keep my end up. Is that on the right side? Ah, and then we start all over again. We just got three more in there. Three more. Three more. We're going to have to do two of them in here. Two, two under, and one in. Okay. Okay. Got it. Let's go back over to the left. We're gonna keep doing it over and over and over again until we get to the top of this. I just broke my rope. <laughs> no! I broke my jute twine. Darn it. <sighs> Crap. No, this is just going easy for me. Darn it. <sighs> Darn it. <sighs> Shoot. Okay, so now before I get too close to the top of my frame with my sizal rope, I want to cover the top of the frame because it isn't very pretty. So I'm going to be using that tan and white jute twine. I hot glue the end of it to the frame and then just wrap over and over and over again around the top of the frame. Then when I get to the end, I will cut the twine and glue the end to the frame. Then I will just finish weaving that rope through my columns until I reach the top. Then I wrap my end around the metal column and secure it with hot glue and jute twine.
Now I didn't want any of my cardboard on my basket to be exposed, so I turned my basket upside down and I'm going to cover it with rope just like I did the other side of the cardboard round. So I put some hot glue in the center of the round and stick the end of my rope into that hot glue. Then I will just twirl that rope around the center piece and hot glue down as I go until the rope gets to the outside edge of the basket. Now I'm taking that white and tan jute twine and wrapping it around the basket about one and a half times and then cutting it. Then I cut five more pieces of the twine to the same length. Then I take those six pieces to my craft table and I'm gluing the pieces together at the ends in sets of two. Then I tape those three sets down to my table and I start braiding them. But then I decided the braid wasn't thick enough so I added another strand to each set of two making them a set of three or a total of nine pieces of jute twine. And then I braid them together. When I get to the bottom of the braid, I am going to glue the ends together and then remove the tape from the top and glue the top pieces together. Now I take the braid over to my basket and I am gluing it around the bottom of my basket to make it look a bit prettier. Then after I do this, I notice the gap between the braid and the bottom row of my basket. So I'm taking another piece of rope and gluing it into that gap. Now the basket is complete, but I want to make a fabric liner for it. I measured the circumference of the basket and then the height of it and added 5 inches to the height so I could fold the liner over the top of the basket. I wanted to find some cheap fabric because fabric can get kind of expensive. So I went to Goodwill and I looked through the linen section and I found this fabric shower curtain that I liked for $4.49. I folded the fabric in half and marked it with a fabric marker at 31 inches wide by 25 inches long and then I cut it down. 
Then when trying to figure out how to assemble my liner, I came across a method of sewing a seam called a French seam and I decided to try it. I have the wrong sides of my fabric facing each other and the pretty sides facing me and I am sewing along the side cut edge about a half inch in. Then I'm going to cut about a quarter inch off of that half inch seam. And then I'm ironing the seam down to one side. Next, I turn my fabric inside out so that the pretty sides are on the inside and the wrong sides are facing out, and I iron over that seam again. Then I adjust my fabric so that the seam is on one side and I iron along the seam one more time. Now I'm going to sew along the side where the seam is about a half inch in, sandwiching that first quarter inch unfinished edge in the fold. Now I have a pretty finished French seam. Now I'm going to put my basket on top of the remaining fabric and trace around it. Then I am marking a square around my circle just so I have a nice straight edge on my scrap fabric. And then I'm going to cut that square out and then fold it in half and then fold it in half again. Then I will cut out around the quarter of my circle about a half inch or so outside of my marked line. And then when I unfold it, I have a circle. Now I'm going to use these little fabric clips to pin my circle to the bottom of the fabric I just sewed a French seam on. I thought I was going to have to pleat my cylinder piece of fabric a bunch in order to make it fit the circle, but I only ended up needing to pleat it in one spot. So I tried to make that one pleat directly across from my French seam. Then I will carefully sew around the bottom circle, leaving a half inch seam. And I keep checking and adjusting my fabric as I go to make sure I don't accidentally sew any of the fabric that I don't want to be sewn into the seam. Then I don't show it, but I go back around with a zigzag stitch right along the edge of the circle to prevent my fabric from fraying when I wash it. Now I'm just taking some elastic and wrapping it around my basket for sizing and then cutting it the length I need to fit around my basket. 
Now normally I would be folding the top of my fabric over the elastic and sewing the fabric to encase the elastic. But since my fabric already had a finished top, I have to do things a little bit differently. So I am marking two lines on either side of my seam and then I'm going to cut along those lines through just one layer of the fabric. Now I'm taking some embroidery thread which has six strands of thread and dividing it in half so mine is three strands thick. And I will use it to hand sew around the edge of the two holes that I cut inside of my fabric. Now I'm taking a safety pin and attaching it to the end of my elastic and I'm going to thread the elastic through the enclosed area of my fabric. Then I decided to attach another safety pin to the other end of my elastic and pin it to the fabric so that I don't accidentally pull my elastic into the enclosed area. Now that I have threaded the elastic through the top of my liner, I'm going to put the liner on my basket and figure out where I need to sew the ends of my elastic together. Then I safety pin the elastic where I want to sew. And then I sew over the elastic several times and then cut off the excess elastic. Now I can put my liner in my basket and this project is complete. Like I said, this project involved a lot of trial and error and I questioned my sanity several times while working on this. And I also thought about quitting several times. But I am so glad I didn't because I just love how it turned out. Let me know what you guys think. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it's inspired you. If you did enjoy the DIY that I shared with you today, then please help support my channel by subscribing if you haven't already, giving me a thumbs up, commenting, or even sharing this video with anyone that you think might enjoy it. And I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!